thanks for watching and I am back! <laughs> Thank you for all your patience! My multivariable class, class is done! I'm done with my conference and now I'm back on YouTube! Woo! And in fact, since I taught a lot of multivariable, this gave me a lot of ideas. In particular, today let me present you a very slick way of proving the arithmetic geometric mean inequality using Lagrange multipliers. Ooh. So, what does AMGM say? And I'll do it in three dimensions because multivariable calculus, but you could easily extend it to any number of dimensions. So in three dimensions, it says that the cube root of XYZ is always less than or equal to X plus Y plus Z over three where, you know, x, y, z are non-negative. And this is kind of neat. It says that the geometric mean, which is the cube root of the product, is always less than or equal to the arithmetic mean, which is just the average as we know it. And so, the way we do this, again, there's another video that uses just single variable calculus to do it, now we want to do multivariable. So step one, and again, it's not clear why we approach it this way, but what we want to do, we want to maximize the following function, x, y, z, which is just x, y, z, so subject to the following constraint, I guess it's, you know, x plus y plus z equals to c. Where c is just an arbitrary constant. And again, you might be like, why do we do this? And my students on the final were also like, why do we do this? But you'll see in the end what we have to do. So, we want to maximize this function subject to that constraint so for the constraint, just put everything on the left-hand side, which you don't really need to do, but let's just be systematic. So this is our function f, this is our function g, and now we want to use Lagrange multipliers, which says the following. All it says that, you know, at a maximum or a minimum, the gradient of f equals to some constant, lambda, times the gradient of g. So the two gradients are parallel, but this is a completely different story. So in this case, what this says is that fx is lambda gx, fy is lambda gy, and fz is lambda gz, so it's not jz, but gz, okay? Don't you miss me. <laughs> okay, well, again, horrible equations, it turns out it gets vastly simplified. So, the derivative of xyz with respect to x just becomes this constant yz. The derivative of g with respect to x, just 1, so lambda times 1. And then similarly, the derivative of f with respect to y is xz, and that's lambda. And then the derivative of f with respect to z is xy, and it also equals to lambda. So what we get is that all those three quantities are equal to lambda, so in particular, they're equal to themselves. So what we really get is that yz equals to xz, and for example, xz equals to xy. Okay, now we want to cancel out the z's, for example, and here, um, the only condition is, well, we want z to be greater than zero, but we, it could happen that they're equal to zero. But look at this function. 
remember f of x, y, z. That's x, y, z. But we want to maximize this. And, well, if z is 0, then this whole thing is 0, which is not a maximum. Because you could have any other positive value, which will give a bigger value for f. Maybe I forgot to mention that constant c is greater or equal to zero. So we can do that, which means now, bang, bang, we can cancel that out, y equals to x. And also similarly here, bang, bang, cancel the x out, and we get z equals to y. And lo and behold, what do we have? We have that x equals to y and y equals to z, so in fact, x equals to y equals to z, which tells us at a maximum or a minimum, all those three quantities are equal. But the question is, um, what, if, what are x, y, and z? And for this, as is usual with Lagrange multipliers, you just use the constraint last. And so remember, what was our constraint? Well, simply that x plus y plus z equals to c. Now let's plug in x equals to y equals to z. So x plus x plus x equals to c. So tres x, okay. 3x equals to c. And therefore x is c over 3. But remember, x equals to y equals to z. So y is c over 3, and z is c over 3. This gives us a point where we have, you know, a maximum, but the question is, what is the maximum? Well, I'll just plug it into f. So f of x, y, z is x, y, z, and that's c over 3, c over 3, c over 3. And let's just leave it like c over 3 cubed. And again, this can't really be the minimum, because if you look, the minimum is just 0 in this case. All right. So that's great. What does that tell us? It tells us that the maximum value of f is c over 3 cubed. And now in the next step, let's just extract some useful info from that. So step two. Okay, what do we have? We have, again, that this is the maximum value of f, but by definition of the maximum value, I guess suppose this is c over 3 cubed, and this is, I guess, f of x, y, z. Because this is the biggest value, any other value of f must be beneath it. So, by definition of a maximum, we have f of x, y, z is less than or equal to c over 3 cubed. And so, in particular, x, y, z is less than or equal to the cube root sorry, of x, y, z is less than or equal to c over 3. Sorry, again. So, what we have is x, y, z is less than or equal to c over 3 cubed. That's by definition of f. Then take the cube root, and you get the cube root of x, y, z is less than or equal to c over 3. And we're almost done, because what was c? Remember, c was just x plus y plus z. So we get x, y, z cube root is less than or equal to x plus y plus z over 3. Which is, ding, 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 our arithmetic geometric mean inequality. And if you want to be fully rigorous, you would be like, you know, let x, y, and z be given, and let c be, you know, x plus y plus z, and then do this proof, and then you're done. So, 
If you like that and you want to see more calculus extravaganza, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. And now we're happy and we can go home happy. <laughs> and I'm so glad to be back. Thank you so much.